few Saints and Wigan fans sat in and that sat with Nero's all this all the weekend long. There was a guy who on the Saturday had a Toronto Wolfpack top on, but he had caps of different teams on on both days. He had a, he had NFL jerseys from every type of team <laughs> on over the weekend. He had more costume changes than uh, than a darkness gig, I think. And uh, and he was yeah, he was definitely <laughs> supporting everyone, but they were around all weekend around sort of where we were behind the sticks in the north stand but there wasn't a you know there was a huge exodus after every single game and I didn't see too many of the teams that were there on the on the Saturday there supporting on the Sunday and and kind of vice versa which is a, a real big disappointment when it, the the rugby that was put out for I'd say at least at least three of the six games was absolutely cracking and then the entertainment value of the other games was still up there so so yeah but that was that was the the summer bashing short we're going to get to all the games later on i, I had a great time I'm, I'm hoping you know that there's some form of summer bash down the line but it's, it's a decision having, having not managed to make it to one I, i'm be disappointed if, if there isn't because i would like to go to one obviously this year i was kiboshed by northern rail and the train situation it was just not not going to be possible for me to get there we should we could mention that i mean it stopped one of our uh one of our co-hosts in the in the co-host family alan getting along because the trains just absolutely butchered his plans to the point where he got so frustrated that he wrote off the whole weekend which was a terrible shame and i hope northern realized that you know they need to get the rest to go it's not just about the industrial action that was happening on saturday because it it you know, rearranged plans to travel on the Friday, and the trains were such a fucking mess on the Friday that that fell through. Yeah, as and well. that's that's uh, why I couldn't get up. Was just looking at it on even travelling on the Friday and coming back today, it was still going to be near impossible. Yeah, and um, when Northern are one of the main sponsors of it, I don't know if it was a masterstroke <laughs> by their by their employees in the union to to call industrial actions around a event that they were one of the headline sponsors of or whether it just fell that way I'm, I'm assuming none of them give a shit about rugby league and it just fell that way um but it really was an embarrassment for them just as the whole last week has been an embarrassment for them across uh, across the train network but um but yeah that that was a real issue in the <sighs> But without any leadership in the RFL, you know, they couldn't turn around and say to the, the major stakeholders and sponsors and partners, what the fuck are you doing? Uh, so everything just kind of falls apart, sadly. And it was a, one of many contributing factors to an absolutely fantastic weekend, not having the support and attendance that it really deserved. Um, so before we get on to the news, we've got a, t a tweet that came in from Paul Michael Craig at PaulMac underscore 78, who enjoyed a lot of the action from Down Under this weekend. Um, he said, what do you think of Richard Shaw Wright's idea? We're, we're, we saw Richard, actually. He was wearing big... I'll, I'll, go, I'll read out the tweet in full in a minute. We saw Richard on the Sunday, and he walked across in front of us. He was wearing a big hat and big sunglasses, <laughs> and we didn't have a clue who he was when he waved. And then he took his hat off, and Don realised it was <laughs> Richard Shaw Wright. So we sort of gave him. Do you think he was? Do you think he was back. in a deliberate disguise? Was there someone that he didn't want to see? Who well, was there? If he was in deliberate disguise, why would he wave? <laughs> <I don't. laughs> but maybe it was disguised from someone else. Do you think he's got an enemy yeah, somewhere? Well, I don't know. He did. He was wearing a pink shirt and was sat in the oh, press box for the entire of the day over the the little one walk he had. Where we it's not the greatest him. of disguises, yeah. then. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, he's, he's not good at going incognito. Um, okay, but anyway, Paul said, so "What do you think of Richard Shaw Wright's idea of playing both Magic Weekend and Summer Bash in Manchester on the Bank Holiday Weekend? Summer Bash will be played at the Academy Stadium, <laughs> so that the the one over the road, the uh, the Manchester." version of the uh, Barcelona set up there that they've got now at the Etihad campus but do you have any views on this combining the two events I think I kind of like the idea and the broad theme of it of trying to kind of intermingle it however how you'd work that logistically from a timings of kickoffs from a safe spectator safety of getting people across and back if they if you would kind of just stagger the games ultimately and just from a sheer point of view of fitting them in because that would create some very long days if you were trying to fit them all in over even over three days that's going to be quite a long setup and how many people would necessarily stay for all three 
how would you stagger it? You'd have, you'd have to do some real thinking behind it to get it. Right. And, and I kind, I, yeah, I, I like I the, like the, the, the festival of, of rugby yeah. idea by it. Yeah, where you get everyone in the same place and it 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 puts some momentum into some of the championship games. And you could even put like the games that no one watches from the Super League in the smaller ground yeah. and move your big because there's an appetite from the wider audience to see championship games it's not necessarily there to go and attend them but plenty of people I'd guess in excess of 10,000 people were in for the Toronto to lose game at the start of the Magic weekend for example yeah and and the other thing is is, is giving it the space as well because I know like for the Magic weekend I couldn't go because there was a Coventry game on on the same weekend so getting up to Newcastle and back a back down on the cross was just going to be too much for one weekend so they need to think about the whole game if you want it to be a whole game thing then you need to think about having everything even if that means you know stopping out your leagues for the day to make sure that we've got a complete clear window in the calendar to make sure everybody's at one at one place but they've got to think about no i completely think about the whole thing rather than just looking at one edge and i I wonder, with Super League being trying to separate itself in organisational terms from the RFL, if that is going to happen, or if they will carry on and do their own thing and kind of leave leave it, it really on their own. It really depends. I, I think it's going to be Super League or bring along the clubs that they think are going to be commercially beneficial for Super League and and kind of discard the rest. So I, I, I certainly don't think that whole game joined up approach. Is, is going to be there that's my fear so yeah I, I think there's, there's other ways to throw these kind of games together and I do think it would be fantastic to have championship games and Super League games as parts of double headers or that sort of thing anything you can well, that's, get yeah going that's on, something going, going back to you an audience that's already going to be there to see these championship games and then it's going to get more more possibility of television exposure as well which um, is what we all want at least for the top half of those championship sides um you know i don't think too many people are going back to the sky plus planners to rewatch that battle jewsbury game <laughs> with you know with all respect to both sides yeah so what's your final well i suppose, on I suppose one thing going back to sort of your and josh's talk the other day is what you could do is look at having them but if you're going to do an on the road round that you suggested have have championship game or Andy, or even a League One game or a women's game, part of those fixtures, and make the on the road, you know, make it three or four or five games in the one place, and make it a whole day, so it makes a more of an event out of each of those. So you have, you know, a game in here, there, and everywhere. But the thing is, I, I was thinking on that is you kind of want it spaced out. So for the complete, complete systems and the nerds who want, like myself, who would like to go to all those sorts of games for the trivia point of view then they can go, they can, you know, they're spaced out over a number of weeks. You could even do a ticket, you know, go and get five for the price of six, the price of five or something like that. So I think there's, I think there's ways around it. Yeah. But I've, again, I think... I like that. I do like that way of thinking better than having, trying to cram eight, 12, whatever it might be, games into a couple of days in one location, maybe putting on a, a run up of, you like you say a women's game, then a League One game, a Championship game, and a Super League game, kind of in the same venue on the same day, potentially that or close together on the same day. That I, I do like that. That does appeal to me massively. And like you say, you can kind of space them out to an extent. Yeah, you can. I mean, there's there's creative ways to do it. You just need the right people to be sat down in a, in a in the right room for the right amount of time and work it out properly, and and everybody back it. But yeah. <laughs> That, yeah, I won't right. have a... Okay, and whilst we and, and whilst we like scan the skyline for those flying pigs, we will move on to news from around the world of rugby league. Okay, news then from around the world of Rugby League, sponsored by LittleWarden.com. If you have a website, then visit LittleWarden.com and see what they can do to help you. They can help you with domain expiration checks, redirects, and all sort of important background web stuff that they'll make simple for you. Little Warden, monitoring the tedious. Just just a note on Little Warden, I had had tea out with one of the uh, directors of Little Warden on Friday night, 
and it was brought to our attention that the second director of Little Warden wasn't aware of the sponsorship <laughs> of the show until uh, until it was played in the car a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> So, so, so we thank all of the directors. If you've got a website and you need for, some, uh, for this yeah. If you <laughs> if you've got a website and you need some help with making it run smoothly uh, over time, then Little Warden are the people to go to for sure. Okay, we're going to start with news that slipped through, kind of. Well, probably could have edged it into last week's show, but it was confirmed the following day, and that is Saint Helens have signed Fiji captain Kevin Naguama from National Rugby League side West Tigers on a three-year contract. The 29-year-old centre, who scored 47 tries in 102 NRL appearances, will join the Super League club next season. Quite, quite an interesting, uh, interesting signing. It does look that, that they're preparing for life without Ben Barber. Is he... Well, they're insisting, they're insisting that they're not. Um, it's an, it's an exciting signing either way, yeah, isn't it? Definitely is, and also uh, recently got engaged as well. It's uh... yes. So. Uh... So now that she's uh, she's locked into the trip to over to Merseyside now, she was obviously maybe on the fence and he thought a big shiny diamond <laughs> might you, you can just imagine the conversation. Okay. Oh, is it, it, it's near London then? Yes, it's it's near London. You can just imagine the uh, the, the viewpoint of uh, the future Mrs. Naguama. Also... I was just about to say it's only like a 10-minute tri- train to, to Wigan and then a two-hour train to, to London, but then I forgot that trains don't work <laughs> like that at the moment. <laughs> Yeah, good good luck uh, using Northern Rail for that one. And then a four-hour holdover in Crewe, and then a three-hour away in Miller Keynes. But yeah, it's, you know, he's um, a le- 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 as, as a player, electrifying player. Uh, be really interesting to watch him in the um, competition. Interesting, they've gone for a centre in some some respects, rather than perhaps someone more creative as, as to be that kind of central marquee type player in the back line. Well, they've got. Lomax, Richardson, Farge, Smith, I think all under contract still next year, and Ben Barber, you know, potentially. So, uh, whereas Ryan Morgan, I think, is the player he'll be replacing in the side. So, I, I kind of think that that makes sense from that point of view. And Naguama obviously can play at fullback, can play on the wing. The the most interesting side sort of side storyline from this really is going to be the battle between him and Regan Grace for whose hair. Who can have the oh, I was going to come. I was going to come on to that. I think that Nagama is, <laughs> especially Nagama, it's just is bolt upright. It is just, it's like someone's kind of drawn it on in a cartoon fashion. It's definitely going to be giving Regan Grace lessons on how to straighten up that that high top, isn't it? <laughs> you can just imagine the two of them sat there after training. Oh, what, what are you doing this afternoon, lads? Oh, uh, we're, we're going to go into hairdressers. What again? You, you went yesterday. So yeah, well, this takes a lot of work. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. Not something I'm going to know a lot about, but but it's it's definitely some 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 qual. You know, he's an experienced player. He's the captain of his national side. He's going to have some mentoring skills, and they're going to come in useful for your Greek race. <laughs> anyway, what else has been going on? Uh, Leeds forwards Jamie Jones Buchanan and Nathan Petru have suffered injury setbacks. Petru, who's 26, will be sidelined for up to 12 weeks after rupturing a tendon in a bicep. James Buchanan, who's 36, is set to be out between six and eight weeks, having had a clear-out operation on a knee. Um, Wake, another injury story. Wakefield Trinity Centre, Joe Arundel, has been ruled out for at least 12 weeks after having ankle surgery. The 26-year-old run, ruptured ankle ligaments in their Challenge Cup defeat by Huddersfield a couple of weeks ago, and surgery to reconstruct the ligament was successful, but the joint will be immobilised in a boot for 10 days before starting physiotherapy. Good luck uh, to all three of those on their recovery. It's James Buchanan who I feel most sorry for, because he's you know, coming back in. He's done pretty well for when he has been able to play this season and he's not going to have he's not got long because he has said he's hanging up his boots at the end of the year so it's going to it's going to yeah. be interesting uh, if he you know I, I hope we get to see him again is my main hope it it must have been it's it, you know it's described as a clear out operation but it must have been absolutely essential because given the yeah. the Leeds injury situation and, and stuff like that it, they wouldn't have wanted him to be out of action for for a couple of months but yeah um, good luck to them all in their recoveries. Yeah. 
So uh, some contract news. Huddersfield Giants pop Matty English has extended his contract with the Super League club. The 20-year-old will remain at the John Smith Stadium until the end of the 2022 season. 